Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. I've got the little KSGER T12 soldering station out tonight and I'm doing a couple little safety mods to it. I did a review on this station a number of weeks back and I had mentioned these two little safety concerns and I got a couple of comments in there wondering uh, how you go about uh, modding it to address them. So I figured I'm doing it anyway, I may as well video the process. So let's get right into it. I certainly don't have to do these modifications. I just figure they're a good idea. And by showing you the process, uh, maybe you'll get a better idea if you want to try it or not. They're not difficult, but, uh, well, you'll get an idea. You know, I think these stations are relatively safe even without the mods, but uh, the one regarding the case grounding, to me that's, uh, that's a pretty big, big deal. And uh, I just feel a lot more secure using this station knowing that the uh, metal case is earth ground. So to get these open, you just have to take the four Phillips screws out of the back plate. And on the front plate, you just need to take the top two Phillips screws out, not the bottom ones. Because this front plate will be staying on the base of the unit. And the cover will just lift off the top. And then this whole back section with the switch mode power supply will slide out. You just have to unplug the power supply power cord from the T12 main processor board and you don't even touch this board so that's a nice thing. So here is the switch mode power supply and all the mods are to it. One is case grounding and the other is uh, giving this uh, rectifier heat sink a little bit more protection. Out of the two mods this is kind of the secondary one so if you don't want to do it don't worry about this uh, heat sink. Uh, grounding the case though to me is the most important one. So all I'm going to be doing is just soldering a little grounding wire and then I'm going to drill a hole in this back plate just to screw a little eyelet connector on there to connect the uh, tab here to the plate. And then when this plate is screwed back onto the case, uh, the whole case will be grounded as will the exterior of the GX connector. This is all anodized aluminum and anodizing is an insulator. So you may find that uh, just putting the screws in alone is enough to make electrical contact. What you might wanna do is just get a, a file or some sandpaper and just take some of the anodizing off around the screw holes here. And then also where they made up to the case where they screw into the case. We'll just see if this GX connector is conductive to one of the screw holes back here. And yes, it is. So if you found that wasn't the case, you may have to take this plate off, grind some of the anodizing off where that screw screws to this case. You may even have to loosen up this nut and tighten it down a little bit more so this GX connector is making electrical contact with this plate. So I just wrapped a, a shop towel around the power supply board so any of the metal shavings uh, when I'm drilling don't get into the board. You know, you could have a vacuum hose in there or whatever to suck them up if you wanted to, whatever works. Just got it mounted in the old vise here. And I'm just gonna go roughly in the center here. And I just have the uh, Dremel out and I just, come on, focus just uh, cleaned off the back of that hole I drilled so there's good electric conductivity between the uh, little uh, wire eyelet and then I also just ground the uh, anodizing off on these two screw holes as well. Don't quite have a small enough eyelet but this will work. Out a little bit of wire, we don't need much here. That'll be plenty. Got a nice little dollop on there. Nice little dollop on that end. And we're just gonna tin the end of this eyelet. 
And we will solder the wire onto that. Nothing special. Uh, I don't want that to be pinched. We'll put the case halves on, so let's go that way. That should work. There we go. So that's all there is to grounding the case. And what I like about this method with the eyelet on the back is you can still pull this out easily enough. It's not like the grounding wires somewhere else on the case that you'd have to undo. You can just pull this whole assembly out if you ever had to work on that. No, it's getting serious when you have the cock sauce out. Oh, baby. Should mention, always wash your hands before eating anything after playing with solder. So this heat sink, you've got a couple of options here. Actually, I should explain what the problem is or potential problem. My biggest concern with this uh, heat sink where it's located is this outside cooling fin goes right, it just grazes and goes over top of this power input trace. Th this trace is essentially at uh, line voltage. There is a voltage drop as it goes through the filtering and the rectification. I'm not really too keen about uh, just the uh, coating on the board insulating this fin from that uh, line voltage trace. This heat sink, by the way, is floating. If it was to get energized, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. It's not connected to any traces or anything on the board. It's just mounted on the PCB board, uh, completely fo floating and isolated from everything else. The rectifier itself is insulated from the heat sink. None of the leads on the rectifier are conductive to the heat sink itself. But uh, one potential issue is the uh, one trace from the rectifier here goes under this side on the secondary half of the uh, power supply. And then, you know, we've already talked about that input one. So if somehow those two were to short, that would be a problem. And, you know, this heat sink is somewhat defeating the uh, air gap isolation slot that goes underneath, you know, isolating the primary and the secondary halves. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I'm going to pull the heat sink off first. I don't know if I'm just going to grind that fin down and put a little capped on tape under that side. That's probably the easiest. So I'm just going to uh, get the old desoldering tool. You could use uh, whatever desoldering method you want. Solder wick, whatever works. Oh, I hate non-leaded solder. It doesn't melt where the crap. Oh, that's horrible. I'm gonna have to re-solder that with some leaded. Did I get everything out of that one? Yes, I did. This one's being a stubborn little bugger. Come on, there we go. Now let's try it. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. There we go. Did I get it all? Better unscrew our little rectifier here. Tear it out in the process. Flat bladed. Not Torx, you idiot. So there's our little heat sink. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to raise it up. I think that's going to be the easiest. So to do that, we'll just uh, grab some side cutters here. And hopefully we can pull these pins out a bit. Just to give it a little extra length. Come on. There we go. I'm just going to reverse this. So it'll be sitting upside down. So I'll take the pins out. And that way... Can just drill a new hole wherever. So I'll just put the pins in underneath here. Squeeze it in. There. Now we will mount it and solder it in. Just want to get 
get it. So we've got a nice little air gap in there. Do we have enough to solder on the back side? Yes, we do. Got a nice air gap. And we will just mark a whole spot where to drill our hole. We'll tap it out. Happy tappy. So we'll put, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some of that uh, heat conductive snot on the back of our little rectifier here. Just to help it out. Can't hurt. Now, let's get this in here. Hopefully we can show this without too much drama. There we go. Now I'm just going to put the screw in to hold. We'll let that rectifier actually hold the heat sink into position. Yeah, that'll work. Nice little gap in there now. And we'll just solder the pins. Yeah, so now we've got a nice air gap in there. No chance of that getting uh, energized by any of those traces. Don't know why they don't do that from the factory. It'd be so easy, right? But this is fun stuff. So we'll get her back together, test it out, make sure everything's grounded. That'll be it. One other thing I thought I'd do while I was in here is turn the switch around. Here in North America, up is on, down is off. Okay, let's see if everything's grounded out properly. Put our testy meter in continuity mode. There we go. So we will hold one pin onto our ground pin of our C14, one of our test leads on that. And we'll just make sure that's grounded. Yep. And the case itself. There we go. You have to get through that anodizing. Done. And let's just plug it in to make sure it still works. There we go. And of course the air is on because we don't have the iron plugged in, but everything's good. So I'm just going to uh, button it back up. This wire here, now that this is raised up a little bit, I'm not too keen on that. So I'm probably just gonna tuck that down there like so. Grounding the case to me is the most important. Uh, but as you saw, raising that up was no big deal. It was kind of fun, actually. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.